What's good everyone, this is Raisin, and today we're going to check out the GMK Tech Knuckbox G5. So I, I picked up this little thing so I can replace my parents' aging computer, but I thought before I give it off to them, um, I'd play around with it a little bit. Now this thing has been around for a while, and by now there's been a lot of coverage on it, so I'll just, uh, in instead of going through the specs, I'll just throw them up on screen right now, and uh, you can pause to read it and have a look. Now before we move on, I just want to mention that this mini PC retails for about 280 Australian dollars on Amazon. Currently, there is a deal which brings that price down to 224 Australian dollars. Now, if you're an Amazon Prime member, I think sometimes you might be able to get a coupon which brings the price down further. I managed to get this with an extra coupon uh, for 174 Australian dollars. So I thought that was a good deal. So now after updating Intel's graphics drivers and then installing OBS and DaVinci Resolve, I then had to update Windows, which took a bit of time. Anyway, not long after that, I got to setting up simple scenes in OBS, mainly just a starting screen, a game screen and an ending screen. And then I moved on to setting up the encoders for the output. Now, Intel has their own hardware encoder, their version of NVIDIA's NVENC, which is QuickSync. Uh, for the streaming encoder, I used a QuickSync H.264. And for the recording, I used QuickSync's HEVC. Whenever I run a stream, I usually have it record at the same time so that uh, it saves me from having to download uh, a VOD later. Now, with all that set up, it was time to turn on the stream and uh, boot up a game. Now, I tried to choose a low demanding game just so that we'd have something pretty to look at. But also um, with this machine, since it's, it is low powered, um, I wouldn't recommend playing like AAA games on this just because it wasn't built for that. Um, th the main takeaway from this is basically just so that um, you can use, you know, this little mini PC as a streaming PC, possibly hook up a capture card to it and run the stream off of that while you have a, a proper gaming PC. Or you can run a capture card into this mini PC and um, play play off your you know PS5 or your switch or you know whatever but yeah tests turned out good and I think the recording went pretty well as well all right so with that out of the way, it was time to uh, move on to our next bit of a play around. Now, you're probably wondering, how does DaVinci Resolve perform on this machine? Well, spoiler alert, you're watching an entire video edited by DaVinci. So I would say pretty well, but let's go over the process anyway. So after its initial boot up and uh, its initial checks, I then checked out its memory and GPU settings uh, to make sure the machine's being detected and then I got around to importing our footage. Now when I went through the footage and started laying them out on the timeline, I was very surprised at how smooth it was. But that surprise wasn't gonna last long because when I inspected the videos, it showed that I had forgotten to capture in 4K, which I normally do. So I did another quick test in 4K, imported it back into uh, DaVinci. I set up a new 4K timeline, placed the new footage into the timeline and uh, checked it out. Now, from my experience, sometimes if it's sluggish on 4K, I go to the playback and then go to the timeline playback resolution and set it to half. And that usually mostly fixes the sluggishness. And with that, I'm back to being giddy about this little machine being able to edit in 4K. So I did just that, continuing to edit throughout the whole uh, project, setting up the delivery and exporting it out for YouTube. 
So what's my takeaway here? What's what's my conclusion? Um, for DaVinci, I think it's a fine editing machine for simple projects. I haven't run Fusion stuff with it, so I'm guessing that it probably would chug at Fusion stuff, but it seems to handle 4K video all right, um, at least 4K standard video. ProRes, I'm guessing it's going to suffer somewhat. As for OBS, I think it's a, also a fine OBS machine as well, as long as you're not playing games on it at the same time, because I don't think it'll run games very well, unless you're doing some retro emulation. Um, for that, you'd want to see a, a video from ETA Prime. They do a great review of this product um, as it pertains to gaming. What I would use this for in terms of OBS is basically just to stream out, to capture game footage and uh, you know to plug in your cameras too and your microphone. That's what you would probably be better off doing with this one. And that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoy that, uh, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. And if you have anything to add or any questions, uh, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you and I'll see you next time.